All right, we're just going to read along, and you guys can highlight what I highlight, and we'll just kind of discuss as we go. But if I write it down, it's probably important enough for you to write it down. Capiche? Sure, Miss Scott. All right, number one, check true or false to show whether you think each statement is true or false. Durr. The nucleus of an atom does not change when the atom undergoes a chemical reaction. True, 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 true. That is super important that you understand that. Nothing happens to the nucleus in a chemical reaction. Nothing. Okay? The only thing that happens during a chemical reaction is atom, uh, atoms gain, lose, or share their electrons. Nothing happens to the nucleus. That's really important for you to understand. Uh, second one, an atom does not react with other atoms if it has the same number of protons as it has electrons. That is false. What's going to determine whether it reacts or not? Yep. Uh, the what? The number of electrons, specifically whether we have a full outer shell of electrons, a full number of valence electrons or not. Remember, remember that first shell was full at 2, and the second shell was full at 8, third shell is full at 8. So atoms are going to react if they do not have a full outer shell of electrons. All right, next one. All of an atom's electrons can interact with the electrons of other atoms to form bonds. False. What are the only electrons that are involved in chemical bonding? Yes. Only valence electrons are involved in bonding. So nothing in the nucleus is involved in a chemical bond, and of the electrons, it's just the valence electrons. Yeah, no problem. Sure. Not a problem. Number two, fill in the blank with the word or phrase that you think correctly completes the following sentences. Use the model of a lithium atom shown above. The what represents the location of the electrons? It's the blue area, which is what? Yeah, that's the electron cloud. And the what is represented by the red and silver spheres? The nucleus. Okay. Number three, many scientific words such as bond also have everyday meanings. So, for example, every day, Zach used glue to form a bond between the broken parts of the chair. Okay. Okay. Form a connection. All right, so if we're going to say a chemical bond can form between two atoms, how do we define that? Like an instance of one. How about form a connection? Between atoms by doing what? Gaining losing or sharing in some cases sharing what electrons all right super duper all right next page here we go All right, I'm going to read this real quick, and then I'll go back and sort of tell you what you need to pay special attention to. 
Uh, it says, how do atoms join together? There's only, for instance, 26 letters in the English alphabet. But how many words do we have out of those 26 letters? Lots. Tons, right? OK, well, it's the same sort of thing with the chemical elements. There's, there's 92 chemical elements that occur naturally, OK? And out of those, we can make all sorts of compounds, OK? So similarly, there are a limited number of elements, but their atoms join in different ways to form the many substances around you. Some substances, such as water, are made up of only a few atoms, and other substances, such as DNA, contain billions of atoms. So the molecules that they form can be either fairly simple or very, very complex. Okay? A huge variety of substances are possible because atoms join together by forming chemical bonds. A chemical bond is an interaction that holds atoms or ions together. A group of atoms that are held together by chemical bonds is called a molecule. Okay. It says, look at the model of a water molecule below. So it's down here. Every water molecule is made of one oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms. The chemical bonds hold the atoms together. Okay, and then it asks you what are chemical bonds. I'm not going to write it because it's right up here. A chemical bond is an interaction that holds atoms or ions together. Got it? But do you need to write it? Yes, because it's part of your active reading. So make sure that you go back and do that in a minute. Okay? Um, number six, draw arrows that point to the location of the chemical bonds in the water molecule. Hint, the oxygen atom is red and the hydrogen atoms are boo, boo, blue. Okay. Uh, so there's going to be a bond here and a bond here. Does that make sense? Because there, there's going to be a bond between the oxygen and this hydrogen atom. There's going to be a bond between this, the oxygen and this hydrogen atom. Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Turn the page. What happens to atoms during a chemical change? Chemical changes change the identity of substances. However, a chemical change does not create or destroy atoms. That's really important. A chemical change does not create or destroy atoms. Instead, the atoms are rearranged to make new substances with different properties. In the fall, leaves change colors due to chemical changes, for instance. Uh, leaves contain pigments of different colors, including green, red, and yellow. And usually the leaves appear green because they contain a lot of green pigment. But in the fall, the atoms that make up the green pigment are rearranged to form new colorless substances. You can see the red and yellow pigments because they don't break down as easily. Okay, um, so that's a more complex uh, chemical reaction. We'll do some simple chemical reactions when we get to that in the lab. Um, but chemical changes change the identity of substances, but a chemical change does not create or destroy atoms. That's really important. Instead, atoms are rearranged to make new substances with different properties. All right, down here. Atoms are rearranged. In order for atoms to be rearranged, chemical bonds have to be formed or broken. The models below show how hydrogen gas and chlorine gas undergo a chemical change to make hydrogen chloride. Initially, there are bonds between the hydrogen atoms and bonds between the chlorine atoms. In the chemical reaction between hydrogen and chlorine, these bonds break. A new bond forms between each chlorine atom and uh, hydrogen atom. The atoms that make up hydrogen gas and chlorine gas still have the same number of protons, so they do not change their identities. Instead, the atoms are simply rearranged to form hydrogen chloride. Okay, so go back up. In order for atoms to be rearranged, chemical bonds have to be formed or broken. 
screen? There's my screensaver. Okay. All right. Down here in the chemical reaction that they showed you, you have a molecule of hydrogen. Hydrogen um, atoms hang out in pairs. That's why there's two bonded together. Chlorine atoms also do the same thing. They hang out in pairs. So we have a hydrogen molecule containing two atoms of hydrogen. We have a chlorine molecule containing two atoms of chlorine. Is everybody with me so far? Okay. When those two are allowed to react, then we have the bond between the hydrogens breaking, the bonds between the chlorines breaking, and we have one hydrogen forming a bond with a chlorine, the other hydrogen forming the bond with the other chlorine. Okay. Now, this is really important. How many of each type of atom are there on each side of the arrow? If you notice, there are a total of two hydrogen atoms on the reactant side. The side that you begin with is the reactant side. Okay. Do you all notice that there's two? How many hydrogen atoms do we have on the product side, the side that we end with? There's one, and there's another one. So how many? Okay. So we had two in the beginning, and we have two at the end. So we have two hydrogens on each side. For the chlorine, we started out with two, and on the product side, do we wind up with two? Yep. Okay. Do what? Will they ever change? Yeah. No. Now they're going to, so for instance, instead of being bonded to themselves, hydrogen and chlorine, they are now bonded to each other. But there's still the same number of atoms of everything. And that's really important for you guys to understand. Okay, chemical bonds, yes, have to be broken. But remember up here where it says chemical changes don't create or destroy atoms. So whatever we start with, we have to wind up with the same number and type of things that we started with. Now, they might be rearranged into different substances, but if we started out with two hydrogen atoms, we've got to wind up with two hydrogen atoms somewhere. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. How can you tell, oh, I'm down here, how can you tell that atoms are not created or destroyed by the chemical change? Basically by what I just said. What are we doing? Okay. There are the same number Same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the reaction. So if you start off with two hydrogen, you're going to wind up with two hydrogens somewhere. If you start off with two chlorines, you're going to wind up with two chlorines somewhere. And again, you'll learn this um, more as we go along, but what we start out with are reactants. Reactants are what we begin a reaction with. Products are what we get at the end of the reaction. Okay? And it's going to look a lot like a math equation this substance plus this substance, you know, reacting together is going to yield or produce a new substance or substances. This arrow right here you might want to put means yields or produces okay. 